Using the river is a much more economic and efficient way of moving bulk materials. It was done many years ago and uh, we sort of reinvented the wheel. The River Thames threads its way from the North Sea through the heart of London. It's a green superhighway and use of it is growing. Last year, more than 3 million tonnes of materials were moved on the Thames, keeping over 175,000 lorry journeys off the capital's congested roads. Being moved by water are tunnel linings, sand, gravel and waste. Together they make this the busiest inland waterway for freight in the UK. Not only does it cut congestion, it's better for business and the environment. Overall, Crossrail will have transported over 4 million tonnes of excavated material by water. And when you look at that on a tonne-kilometre basis, 85% of that will have been by water and rail, with the water playing the major part. Across London, work is underway building the new Crossrail railway line, which will open in 2018, adding 10% to the capital's rail capacity. On a project of this scale, smart logistics are key. Crossrail is using the river to support construction. We're putting a lot of material, particularly the excavated material coming from the tunnels and the station boxes on the river. We're also using it to transport the tunnelling segments that are used to line the inside of the tunnels. So Crossrail turned to the River Thames to seek advice from the Port of London Authority on how to make it work. The Port of London Authority has been very helpful to us in terms of the whole planning, in terms of finding suitable sites, in terms of pointing towards suitable operators and providing a lot of general advice and support. Tunnelling spoil is heading out of the capital by river to a new RSPB nature reserve at Wallasey Island. There will be five million tonnes of it over the life of the scheme. We've committed to get lorries off London's roads, so using the river and the railway as well has been a key issue for us in, in terms of getting lorries off London's roads. And concrete tunnel lining segments are coming to site by river from the Medway factory where they're made. It's due to initiatives like this that the amount of materials being moved between terminals and jetties on the tidal River Thames leapt by a million tonnes in 2012. Wharves need to be kept open for the uh, movement of materials. Um, the Port of London Authority has been um, instrumental in keeping vital wharves open for the movement of aggregates, waste and all of those vital com com commodities moved on the river. On a murky morning down river at Gravesend, 800 tonnes of sand is being loaded at Club's Marine Aggregates Terminal. It's heading upriver to Semex at Battersea to feed construction in the city. The barge takes about three and a half hours to get to its destination in Battersea today um, and it will take 50 lorries two hours each to reach the same destination so it will give you an idea of the congestion that it takes off of London's roads. This is one of the biggest inland freight ships on the river. This vessel carries 1,200 tonnes and it's, it's significantly larger than the past vessels that are freighted in the river to the to sort of central London destinations. The future's looking very well. Um, it's, there's plenty of capital infrastructure projects looming. Uh, and I, I personally would really, really like to see more, more companies get involved and, and look at the River Thames as a sustainable transport mode because there really are some good benefits for all of us to, to reap from it. The, the capital is growing. It means that the waste that needs to be moved, the materials that need to be brought into the, into the capital are going to increase and that is not going to be done with HGV movements. Um, it's just not sustainable, it's not sensible, therefore uh, the use of the river is going to be increasingly more important to the, to the, to the capital. We've seen uh, an increase, steady increase, uh, in the amount of cargo moved. We translate what the river can do. A lot of the contractors, they're used to the roads, they might even be used to the railway, but the river is different for them. When we said that some iron, some steel girders would be there, the tide made it happen and it was there exactly as they predicted. And that is a consistency that they can never get on the road. The Port of London Authority helps put people, places and cargoes together to make the most of the river. It advises the Mayor of London on his policy to safeguard wharves for port use, protecting the essential slip roads onto the marine superhighway. Well, we're looking to increase the trade. Uh, and certainly uh, we can see that there is a capacity uh, to handle this extra material. And we're looking at millions of extra tonnes over the next 10 years or so. And the best thing about using the Thames? No traffic queues, little noise, 
great views and five miles an hour of energy for free when you run with the tide.